You are an ass and you will always be an ass and you will end the course of your life as an ass and as far as I can tell, your life will reach its final day before you accept and realize that you are an animal. Miguel de Cervantes, Don Quixote de la Mancha. Hello and welcome back. The subsequent carnivalesque sequence is very strange. One of the troupe, the figure of the fool or buffoon, taunts Don Quixote and Rocinante, one of the company who was dressed as a fool, wearing many bells and carrying a stick, at the end of which were three inflated cow bladders, approached Don Quixote and brandished the stick like a sword, striking the ground with the bladders and leaping high into the air. Startled, Rocinante took off across the field. Sancho gets off his ass to assist his master, but both the knight and Rocinante are already flat on the ground. Now the narrator describes the fool as the dancing demon with the bladders, who then steals Sancho's ass, making him fly across the countryside toward the town where the festival was to be held. Did you know? According to Mikhail Bakhtin, popular carnivalesque culture, thanks to its irreverent subversion of all things official and sacred, provided the ideological basis for the modern realist novel. Sancho is traumatized. Every time he saw the bladders rise up in the air and fall down on his gray's hind quarters, he suffered the tortures and terrors of death, and he would rather have seen those blows come down on the pupils of his own eyes than touch a single hair of his ass's tail. Now, Sancho reports something different from what the narrator has been describing. My lord, the devil has made off with my gray. Don Quixote's response echoes our own confusion. What devil? Sancho's clarification specifies just whom we are talking about, the one with the bladders. So the fool turns out to be the devil. The theft of Sancho's ass is never a simple matter. As fate has it, the devil, having fallen off the gray in imitation of Don Quixote and Rocinante, the devil went on foot toward the town and the ass returned to his master. Nevertheless, Don Quixote promises revenge. It would be well to avenge the transgression of that devil by punishing someone in the wagon, even if it's the emperor himself. Who robs Sancho's gray in part two? A, the devil, B, the jester, C, they're the same. Correct answer, C, they're the same. The troop, however, is ready for him and prepare to shower him with stones. Sancho advises against the attack. You should consider that there is more rashness than courage in a single man attacking an army which has death in it and emperors fighting in person. We might expect Don Quixote to say something like, I am equal to a hundred. Instead, he observes that since their enemies are not knights, it's up to Sancho to attack them. Sancho refuses, using moral language. There's no reason, my lord, to take revenge on anybody, since it's not right for a good Christian to avenge affronts. My desire is to live peaceably all the days of my life that heaven will bestow me. Don Quixote accepts this logic. That being your decision, good Sancho, wise Sancho, Christian Sancho, and sincere Sancho, let's leave these phantoms and return to seeking better and more appropriate adventures. The narrator agrees. Thanks be given to the salutary advice offered by Sancho Panza to his master. That's all for now. We'll see each other in our next video. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Panza.